All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. Oh, <laughs> that took a lot more effort than usual. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Went to the bank and got money. Let's go money. You love to see it. Wow. Hello, everybody. You doing good? That's good. Anybody have fun, fun days, fun mornings, fun afternoons? Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all doing amazing. Um... I want a tattoo for your father. That's vibes. I want to get my first tattoo. <laughs> I just don't need to. I have an artist chosen out, and I know what I want, but I'm like, I haven't, I haven't booked it yet. So, I really want a tattoo. It'd be nice to have a, tat a fresh tattoo for the summer. So, it'd be cute. Deep Rock Galactic. My bro is getting hell divers. I'm gonna mooch off of his account. That's real. Tell me how it is, because a friend of mine kind of wants to get it, but he's like, he's not sure yet. But all right, worked a bit on a writing work in progress. You love to see it. All right, today, as the stream name suggests, uh, we're gonna be doing a style study today, which is pretty fun. We've never really talked about style studies. I mean, we have, but we haven't really like talked in depth about how to study a style. Um, and I think that that's dumb. So <laughs> we're gonna do a style study. We're gonna, this is gonna be like a mini series. Um, we've got a couple of them planned where I will be doing style studies um, for everybody, for a bunch of different artists. Um, we're just gonna be starting off with Alphonse Mucha because I personally really love Art Nouveau. Um, so we are going to be doing that today. Um, I'm gonna be talking about how I approach a style study. Um, a little bit about the work itself, that sort of fun jazz. Um, and that is what we are going to be doing today. I'm gonna to try and keep the actual like studying portion uh, fairly minimal um, in terms of like me just sitting here chatting about it. Uh, because if you've ever seen Alphonse Mucha's work, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this piece is gonna take forever and a half, so I, I don't want to spend too much time talking. Um, but before we get started today, first off, this stream is sponsored. We'd like to thank our sponsor for this stream, XP Pen, uh, who have awesome who have an awesome selection of digital art tablets for both beginners and advanced artists. Uh, so if you're looking for an affordable and reliable digital tablet, uh, go browse the store. You'll find the link in this video. When you spend time talking, it's not like I'm gonna stop talking once the <laughs> once the stream starts up. Don't worry, I don't I don't shut up. It's, I'm gonna keep speak. I'm gonna speak until my lungs give out. I guess. <laughs> um, Art Nouveau is really fun. But yes, thank you so much, XP Pen, for sponsoring this stream. Link in the description. You can check out the tablets that they have offered. Um, before we get started on the work as well, you guys know the deal. So if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. We art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us and so we can get making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges, or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month. You can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our class that have a limited amount of spots, so be sure to check those out before they are gone. Speaking of critique sessions, one of the main things that we have added to our membership perks is that we now have office hours um, with our instructors. I am on the first Wednesday of the month. Each other instruct each other instructor has their own oh, each of the other <laughs> instructors have their own office hours uh, once a week in the Discord where we have private calls uh, with all of you where we can give you critique and guidance and we can chat and you can show me your work um, and we all sort of have a fun little crit session um, so mine uh, again is on the first Wednesday of the month usually at around 2 or 3 p.m. Um, so my next one is going to be on the 1st of May on Wednesday so fun stuff uh, we also have camps coming up for those who want to take a look at the camps that we offer. Camps are coming up. Um, I will be starting, I will be doing a new thing uh, for comics and manga where we'll be doing 
my camp specifically asynchronous. Um, so if you ever wanted to join a camp, but then weren't too sure because, you know, you gotta be there every day, uh, maybe try mine where you actually don't have to be. You can go to the, go and check out the recording after the fact. But all right. Before we get into the illustration portion, we have submissions. We have art submissions for this week. Um, this is the second to last week for the theme April showers, um, where we, uh, I also count rain, but it's generally supposed to be spring themed pieces. Um, join the discord. You can submit your work for a chance to be featured at the beginning of stream. Starting off, we're going to be starting off with spittle, spittle in the discord. I love foggy atmosphere. I think this one is really, really fun. It's simple, but it's very effective. I love the way that you've done, uh, the edge lighting. Um, that also helps carve out the forms of this character. You could have really easily just had a line along the edge, but you used it to also carve out like the shoulder pads and parts of the, the helmet and stuff like that. And you did a really, really good job with that. Having that foggy atmosphere go farther into the back was really, really cool. Well done. Thank you so much for submitting. Next one is by Ellie May in the Discord. They weren't too sure if it was thematic enough. I think it was pretty thematic. They got a spring witch. I love witches. I really should have a witch character. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, which is kind of funny. Um, but this is a really, really cute character. I enjoy them greatly. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Ellie Mae. I love the, I love the, the like leaves in the hair that kind of form a crown. I think that's super, super cute. I love that. Well done. Thank you so much for submitting. Last but not least, we have Quinn on the Discord. I kept in your your little window because <laughs> I thought that was... Every MS Paint artist has to put in the window, but it's kind of important because it's like you got to show off that you did it in MS Paint. Um, order a chat, so true. Um, again, MS Paint piece. Isn't that neat? So no layers. Isn't that neat? Um, I saw this study being done. I saw the, the, the reference and all. I think you did a really good job, especially being able to achieve it in, again, MS Paint. <laughs> well done. This looks really, really good. With a mouse, too. With a mouse. Love to see it. All right. Thank you so much for submitting. Again, if you would like to join the Discord, you could submit for this month. You've got, like, a week left next tomorrow's live stream, and then the week after, you've got two more live streams to submit for this week's uh for this month's theme april showers and then we will be resetting the theme once again but all right thank you all so much for submitting okay here comes the hard part <laughs> okay so for those who are unfamiliar with alphonse muka uh, no, you're not. You have seen this style before. There is no way you haven't seen this work before. It is Art Nouveau is so like, not even as like a, in terms of like, you learned it in school, like you learned cubism or you learned, um, or you learned like impressionism or stuff like that. This has just become such an art style that is so popular within this zeitgeist of artists online that it is like nigh impossible to find somebody who has not heard of this style in some way, shape, or form, right? Art Nouveau has a really, really fun, uh, it has a really interesting um, line work style. It has a really interesting line work style, it has a really interesting composition style, um, where Alphonse Buca specifically, what he did a lot was he sort of had his main subjects in the center, and then these stupid intricate <laughs> backgrounds on them like i have these ones but there are so many more i just picked out three that i really liked um and these he did an iggy's class I've, I've taught art nouveau uh classes as well yeah they're always fun um and it is like who <laughs> lives under a rock i feel like you haven't seen them anywhere like you haven't been to some kind of like kitschy shop and then like put in like the names and whatever you know name them like name the the pieces this first one is called zodiac oh gosh i don't actually know the names of the other two let's look it up Alphonse Muka. artwork i can find the names of them these are these are pretty popular this one is called job and then this one is called daydream so these are from the 1800s 
Um, yeah, so this is Zodiac, this is Job, and this is Daydream. Um, these ones specifically. What time period was this really big in? Well, 1800s, uh, but this style, Art Nouveau, uh, 1800s. It was, the, the thing is, is that Art Nouveau, it, it, more so than an illustrative style, Art Nouveau was, you see it a lot more in architecture. Um, if you look up Art Nouveau specifically, you'll get a lot of interior design, exterior design, uh, because it is more so within that sort of sphere of art. Um, but you know, taking inspiration from that, there's also the illustrative side of Art Nouveau, that very, this very uh, pattern heavy, very intricate way of working. Um, every single time I do these lessons with my students, every time, uh, exclamation mark classes, by the way, every single time that we do these lessons with these students, um, Living in Paris during the Art Nouveau period, he was widely known for his distinctly stylized and decorative theatrical posters, particularly those of Sarah Bernhardt. There you go. Yeah, super, super decorative. Like, like, uh, let me let me show you Art Nouveau, Nouveau architecture, right? Art Nouveau architecture is so like big and bright and decorative right you can see all of these like interior design elements and like these really louder than life buildings they're very very poppy very very you know that kind of feeling and it was very similar within the artwork it was intricate it was poppy it was bright it was intricate right it was it, it has that sort of feeling to it um what this on my house Lucky for you, there it's it's super easy to find prints uh, of this work because it's his work was really really popular. Um, what's in my house? What the middle one's dress? Um, this is an off the shoulder bell sleeve. You're welcome. Off the shoulder bell sleeved mid length dress. Uh, this is probably a maxi actually, but the the sleeves are. Uh, they're bell sleeves. They're about up up to the elbow. Oh, you want this as your house? Oh, lol. <laughs> you know? That's gonna be harder. <laughs> that's gonna be harder to get. Not to be confused with Art Deco. Not to be confused with Art Deco. No. Two very different things. All right. So again, what I usually tell my students every single time that I have to do an Art Nouveau study, right? I usually pull up these two. These two are my favorites. This one is nice. Uh, I pulled it up as well because that, that background is really, really fun. I've taken inspiration from that a couple times. Um, but I pull up these ones specifically because I want to take a look at the way that the people are rendered. So when we are sort of studying styles, right? When we are studying styles, the... Nouveau is French. So Nouveau, for those who want to learn how to spell it, I'm pretty sure this is how you spell it. I mean, if anything, you can Google it. But Nouveau is uh, N-O-U-V-E-A-U. -E Nouveau. It's a French word meaning new. <laughs> so Art Nouveau just means new art. <laughs> Makes it sound a lot less fancy, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that's what I thought. N O U V E A U. Art Nouveau. It's a lot of vowels, yeah. Canadian. It's, it's, it's well, not Canadian, sorry, French spelling. <laughs> you got a lot of vowels in, in, in the French language. Um, but yes, when we, when we do a style study, what we want to find, styles, an art style is essentially just a repetition of techniques and a repetition of, um, of elements and principles that an artist uses that makes their style distinguishable, right? And in this case, no different. When we do a style study of a master artist like this, um, we want to, in this case, we're doing a style study where we are allowed to copy them exactly um, in the way that they work because this person has been dead for 200 years and it's fine. <laughs> in fact, these works are public domain, so that's why you can sell prints of them and not get in trouble because they are no longer under copyright laws. Um, 
So let's do a study of these ones particularly. First off, we look at these backgrounds. They are super, super busy. Now, the main question is why, if they're so busy, why are they actually not taking over our main characters? And the fun thing with that is that the more detail you add, it's almost like there's no detail at all, right? It's a big thing that I, it's, uh, it's a phrase that I've kept with me <laughs> for ages. It was something that my concept teacher told me. Uh, he was like, if you add too much detail, it's like there's none at all because suddenly there's a new level of normal for the amount of detail, right? So if you busy all of this background up, it actually doesn't feel that busy because it all sort of blurs together. And that's why these figures, these humans that are not heavy detail, right? The faces are very, very simplistic. The skin is very simplistic. That sticks out because it is not as detailed as the background that they're put on top of, right? So they're sort of half, so they're sort of like, it's almost the opposite of what you want to do, right? Usually you want your main figures to be the most detailed thing. You want the background to blur away. But um, in the flip side of this one, you have your background as the most detailed thing in the piece by comparison to having your person having a lot less detail. Um, so that's one thing that we can observe, right? We're observing. We are taking in these art pieces that Muka has created and we are observing what he does and the different patterns that he um, exhibits within his work. Another thing, we see a lot of florals, a lot of greenery, um, a lot of dresses, a lot of women. <laughs> One technique that I actually picked up in my own work um, is the way that he did his hair. Now this hair, if you notice, right, it's almost like we're treating the hair as if it is one flat shape and we're cutting out interior edges of this one flat shape right and i think that that's really really interesting this is a really really cool sort of way to do hair in a way that's like detailed and implies detail but you're not actually illustrating it and it's like it's almost treating it as if it's a cutout and i think that's really really cool um that's something that i have sort of picked up in my own work and another thing you notice is a really really harsh um, really, really harsh silhouette outline, right? There's a lot of inner lines. There's a lot of stuff like that, but that outer line, that like outline that like borders the silhouette, that's super bold and super dark. And it helps like really push out that silhouette. In this one specifically in Job, you can see it boldening up all the hair and then the exterior of the body itself. Right, while everything else on the inside, very, very thin, very like intricate little lines. Right, same thing with this one, uh, Daydream. You have a really, really dark outline outlining this woman by comparison to the inside, which has a lot of very, very thin, small, intricate lines, right? Again, that sort of fade together because they're not, it doesn't look like they're lined in black. Um, the only black outline that we see is of the woman herself it's the the silhouette that she creates and that also helps her stand out against this really really dark background right really really cool really interesting stuff we're also looking at a lot of greens a lot of reds right we're getting that very earthy sort of vibe and while that is probably more likely than not just due to age um it sort of helps, right? It gives us that, it gives it a little bit more of a, what do you call it? Um, unifying, sort of a unifying palette. Um, so we can also take those earthy, sort of greenish, yellowish tones into account when we are working today. Were these painted? Uh, they didn't have digital work back in the 1800s, so yes. <laughs> Uh, these are done in like the 1800s, yeah. So these are these are old, old. These are not these are not digital. Hello, Snoop's Doobs. Welcome in. I do recognize you, but I don't know if I should real name you in a chat. <laughs> Steam powered tablets? No, no digital art in the 1800s. Crazy, right? Photoshop hasn't been around for 200 years. CSP hasn't been around. Whoa. <laughs> no, ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way. Um, all right. But again, I didn't want to go over the style study itself for too long. Those are my observations, right? My main ones that we're going to be sticking with while I illustrate something today. 
because it is a style study, I was like, and I know how difficult the style can be to work in. That's why I was like, I'm not gonna uh, do a poll because if you guys pick for me, it, it's not like I'm designing or it's not like I'm like, uh, you know, like working off of like something where I have a predetermined idea. I'm like this one, I have to back and forth with a piece and a piece or two and then like decide how I'm gonna illustrate this. So I'm like, I should probably pick what I'm gonna do, <laughs> you know? I'm not gonna leave it up to chance. Not even MS Paint? Heck no. Yeah, there's no poll this stream. Yeah, no, no poll. We're just gonna start with the sketch now, as, as I usually do. Again, I'm working for this stream specifically. I want to work really deep within my comfort zone so then I can, like, you know, hopefully get this mostly done. Though knowing me and knowing this style, I don't think I'll be able to. I'll get as much done as I can, though. Too much fine detail, yeah. How big were the original paintings? That's a good question. I actually don't know. Let's check. Job. Well, they were street posters. They were posters. So, poster design, then... Well, it depends what kind of poster they were. Very minimum, it was like... Oh, dimensions 59 by 173 centimeters. Oh! Okay, so this is lithography. All right, friends. Lithography is a style of artwork that is stamped. So there's probably inner stuff in here that has been painted manually. However, that's the reason why this hair is very cut out because... It essentially was. What Alphonse Mucco would do is he would carve um, on, he would carve out like rubber or he would carve out like wood or whatever and he would roll it out in ink and stamp it down. And that's how you get post, that's how you would do posters back then is it would be a stamp that you would do over and over and over. I've done litho a couple times, it's fun, but I've done, I have a more modern version of litho. So can't imagine how that was back of the 1800s. Now we know, yeah. That's fascinating, yeah. <laughs> Originally I was gonna have this be like a history lesson. I was gonna tell you guys the history throughout the entire stream, but then I was like, actually, you know what? It might be more fun to make this a style study now that I think about it. Um. And it's actually kind of fun to learn about it with you guys. So, you know what? Isn't that isn't that neat? All works out, I think. Kind of like the great wave of Kanagawa. Yes. Um Oh no, the the artist name escapes me. Um Hokusai. Hokusai was a woodblock printer. So all of his works um, were done with woodblock. So it's a very early type of lithography. Hokusai, thank you. Lithography, not lithography, it was woodblock. Woodblock is a very early type of lithography. But yes, it was a print. It was one of the very first um, types of print. Um... Oh, I might be wrong, but I think he coined it. I think he he created uh, printmaking just by being able to carve out a thing and being able to make it over and over and over. So production was cheaper. This is my favorite pretty woman. <laughs> I just don't draw women much, okay? I'm like, this is how I'm going to be able to do this comfort zone thing.
Yes, Hokusai was a woodblock painter. Lithography means stone, so these prints were carved in rocks. Oh, perhaps. So maybe then they were initially carved into stone. Oh. Now it's rubber. Now, now you get little rubber pads and you can carve into that, but perhaps they were originally carved into stone. Which, in that case, that's even crazier if you think about it. <laughs> One year older next Saturday. Nice. Happy birthday. I should make this bigger. So then the, the background gets filled out a bit. You know what medium he used for the paint? Good question. Uh, they're just saying lithography. If I were to assume... Zodiac was Muko's first work under his contract with the printer Champlainois and was originally designed as an in-house calendar for the company in this composition Muko incorporated. Twelve Zodiac signs that hail like this behind the woman's head. Zodiac calendar of Champlain, de Champ, chief editor of La Plume. The rest of the stream that's done. Uh, doesn't say, but I, I, if I were to assume, it's probably some kind of, like, oil-based ink. If I had to guess. Faye is streaming. Yes, Faye will be streaming next week. This looks extremely moody. Uh, that's funny you say that. Pierce is an Eldrin elf, so he, he's got a bunch. He's just moody by nature. <laughs> um, decided to do winter. He, because he's an Eldrin elf, again, like D&D stuff, uh, that means that he has a bunch of like seasons that sort of like um, tie into his emotions. So I'm going with winter so that we can get that nice long hair. <laughs> he has different designs for each of his, his seasons. It's a fun concept. Yeah, he's not my character. He's my partner's character. Um, we just happen to play in the same campaign. Pierce is Korn's adoptive dad. Seasonal depression is crazy, yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Can you get a tail? He did get a tail. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to... Pull out a sketch that I'm content with. That would also explain why the edges of the hair is rounded instead of sharp. Because it would be a lot harder to carve out a sharp edge by comparison to a rounded one. Speaking from experience, <laughs> it is a lot harder to carve out a rounded uh, or a, a sharp edge by comparison to a rounded one. Like, it's hard in, like, soft rubber. I can't imagine how hard it would be in stone. So... <laughs> How am I? I am okay. I'm very tired, but like, what else is new, you know? As is per usual on Saturdays, where I get up earlier than my usual wake up time. I will not be disclosing what my usual wake up time is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Want Elfier so bad? Good news! You can cosplay them. There's so many places you can get cosplay Elfiers.
Sorry if I go quiet for a second. I'm like trying to figure this out. Yes, D and D is Dungeons and Dragons. Suggestion for a feminine name. I've got a trans mass OC named Kenny. I'm trying to develop his backstory. I'm not sure what I want his uh, birth name to be. Penny. <laughs> it's the first name that pops into my head. You don't have to use it. <laughs> Kennifer's crazy. Oh yeah, Renaissance fairs for sure have them. Yeah, Eldrin's old school Eldrin's so much fun lore. Yeah, man. Perfect, thank you. No problem. It's complicated when you have to keep track of all of these little things. I'm not even on the line art yet. It's like, it's like, oh gosh. <laughs> this is stream number 106. There, it's running out. Thank you. I'm doing my best. <laughs> want to draw a penny do it dude i want to hold this man in my hands like a bird chances are he's probably taller than you <laughs> anyone has a brush is inspired by mooka's style of hair strands here's the thing is that you can replicate this lining style with any hard round brush this is not something a brush can replicate replicate this is something that you have to like hand do How tall is he? Six foot four. Something hopes for short king? No, no. Pierce is the tallest in the party. <laughs> One of the skill things Faye always talks about. Yeah, yeah. He is. He he's tall. <laughs> he's very tall. Yeah. Second tallest in the party is Atros at five foot ten, I believe. Then I think Quinn is five foot nine. Most of my characters are around that height too. I like to give variety to my characters. Corn right now is four foot two. <laughs> so again, he's he's little. Um but no, Pierce Pierce is very tall. so hard to get this hair to be similar to this style because I'm like I just keep on wanting to like make it really geometric
509, no way. <laughs> Plan a variety of my hand slips and whoops, they're tall now. <laughs> I I like having that, especially because in compositions, it makes it way easier to draw the characters together if they're all different heights. I, I had a, f I, like my friends at one point, they had a campaign that I was really, I was really into. Uh, and they all like a good chunk of their characters were all five foot nine it was so tough to draw every single character because like they were all the exact same height and i was like please guys <laughs> i'm like i can't draw these guys together because they all look they're all the exact same height this is so complicated but yeah variety is the spice of life It's not like there aren't any inner lines for the hair. There are. It's just the, the, the intricacy comes from the hair that sort of breaks apart and becomes these really cool sort of line forms here. Any suggestions where I can get free Photoshop brushes? Oh, Photoshop. <laughs> no, seriously. The if if you have Photoshop, you have access to literally all of Photoshop's uh, free brush download packs. Like all every single Kyle T. Webster brush is available for you. So if you, if you have Photoshop, you just go to go to like Adobe's website and look up brushes, and like you'll you'll find the entire like library of them. Like, yeah, the program's not free, but you get a lot of free stuff with it. <laughs> Photoshop brushes work in Medibang? I don't believe so, because I don't think you can import any external brushes into Medibang. Last time I used it, they didn't have that. Like, you, you couldn't just upload any brushes. Like, they had to come from Medibang's library, and they those weren't great. Say that, this variety, it's like ranged from 6 foot 5 to 7 foot 7 or so, so they're tall and all still ridiculous. So they're all still ridiculously tall, I see. I have characters that range from, like, 3 feet tall to, like, nine feet tall so <laughs> i'm like range you know corn is very little but then the other dragonborn that are at his his old or that were in his old village they're all like the shortest one is six foot seven so it's like the village elder was like eight feet tall i think <laughs> yeah no problem Let's see if i can find that i've looked maybe i'm just a little garden right places it's on the official adobe website yeah adobe.com slash photoshop slash brushes it's the official site you just download them for free <laughs> as long as you have an account it's 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 there for free <laughs> dang okay yeah Oh, how tall is my Zebstrika? Tempo is 5 foot 11. Tall so sees 9 feet. Shortest is the gun wizard. Not sure his height is. All my friends draw him like 4 feet, so I guess that's canon. Real. My tallest character that I have ever created was 20 feet tall. He was this dragon named Atlas. Um, and he was a teacher. <laughs> that's, from, that's from a long ago, long ago character that I haven't drawn in years. So, 
no reason art of him. Last time I drew Atlas, I'm pretty sure was traditionally, and that sketchbook is going to be real hard to find. Love to be taught by Atlas. Yeah, he was a he was a history teacher, if I remember correctly. Massive teacher, yeah. Hello, shading is a photo of a person, however, the hair is making my life a living nightmare. Any tips on drawing realistic hair with having a stroke by the end of drawing it? Yeah, you missed last week's stream. It was the exact topic. It was literally the exact topic. But it depends what medium you're using. What are you what are you working with? Kirby Curry's there. He moves, he walks. You'll be able to see him walk if you become a YouTube member and join the <laughs> and join the crit session because uh, OBS doesn't pick up him walking. So even on glasses, you don't actually see him walking, um, which I think is dumb. But I don't, I don't understand why that that happens. But uh, it works on a Discord screen share for some reason. So using CSP, okay. So you're working digitally, okay. I'm assuming you're trying to get all those little strands in there. First of all, don't do that. Uh, second of all, what you're probably going to want to do is you're going to want to create a block of color first and then add in details little by little. Right? You never want to start by just adding a bajillion lines, right? Because what that's going to do is you're going to overwhelm the piece and it's going to look terrible. So you're going to want to add in blocks of color instead. And that way it feels a bit stronger and easier to look at and easier to work with. Implied detail, exactly. Like, and what is you talking about, bro? I don't <laughs> Stream hopping vibes. No worries. I taught my students today about implied detail, but we were drawing trees. Do you want to see my tree I drew today? Yeah, you do. I drew a tree. <laughs> there's Corin. There's, there's my son. I love drawing trees. Did you know I love drawing trees? <laughs> trees are like my favorite thing to draw ever. Well, not my favorite thing ever, but I love drawing trees. Trees are so fun. I taught my, my students today how to draw trees. We had a tree lesson. I taught them about like implied detail and like how to think when drawing a tree. Cause one of my students actually requested to draw trees and I was like, okay, let's draw trees. <laughs> Cause I was also really tired. So I'm like, I'm like, I don't really feel like doing a big perspective lesson. Cause that was another thing um, that I had planned. But I was like, I don't, I don't feel like teaching perspective today. Let's draw trees. So, I love drawing trees, dude. It's so fun to draw. I got to draw a tree for my last D and D session because we fought a giant evil tree. I was I was living. I was so happy, dude. Oh, the Wispy Willow? No, this tree was evil. Uh, our cleric, Quinn, uh, deleted him from existence. So that was pretty cool. Any sort of rendering? I can get base colors blocked in, okay, but after that I get pretty stuck. Could be the limited brushes in Medibank or my limited skill. Um, I, I'll be honest, I personally, when I was rendering in Medibang, I found it really tough. <laughs> Those brushes are a little bit heavy-handed. They don't feel very natural. Um, but my, my personal tip is, like, go at it slow. Um, you might want to go with, like, um, working on low opacity instead of working on, um, what do you call it? pressure by pressure by opacity 
Like, I like to work with pressure by opacity, but it might not work in the case of working in Medibang, just because of the nature of the of the um, the program itself. Use like 2018 to 2023 slime will we confuse you asking for a friend? No, you won't. <laughs> why why? <laughs> yeah, no worries. Kind of realized Medibang has pretty poor brush selection. Oh yes, no. I I every single time that I had to use it for if you've been around long enough, you remember I used to stream in uh in Medibang. Um, every single time that I had to use Medibang, uh, was a nightmare. I, I just, I was just like, oh gosh. <laughs> I, I struggled with those brushes a lot because, again, I'm a Photoshop user. So going from Photoshop to Medibang was, like, a huge downgrade. <laughs> and it was painful to, to have to work with. This hand is wrong. I'm gonna hurt all of you by deleting this hand immediately. Sorry. <laughs> if it's wrong, I get rid of it. Pixicus is free, to be honest. Might switch to another free program. Yeah, I... See, I have very little experience with free programs i'll be honest like i i know a few of them but i'm like it's kind of like like a lot of people will recommend krita and i'm like i don't mind krita but the problem with krita is that it's like it's powerful but it's not good in the long run just because it is super super proprietary so it like a lot of its shortcuts and a lot of its like brushes and functions and whatnot are very, very like Krita specific. So if you end up like wanting to switch programs, it gets very tough. I I had a friend in college and they only exclusively used Krita and refused to use anything else because they didn't like the feeling. And I'm like, I was like, it's because those defaults are super, super, like, different. That's prerogative, yeah. We can see what some background details look like for this piece. Yeah, we probably will. I just need to sketch them in, and I haven't done that yet. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. It's not going to be as detailed as an actual Mooka piece, by the way. I cannot fit that into a stream. <laughs> so I'm making it as detailed as I can within the allotted time that I am given. look at references for the dress i pulled up pictures of mari from amori and now i'm sad lol <laughs> if you are thinking about playing omori do not pull up pictures of mari from amori just 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 saying <laughs> if you have not played the game don't do it <laughs>
No spoilers, yeah. A viral pack are pretty nice for introducing you to the basics of the drawing program without it being too different from other drawing programs. Yeah. I started with Photoshop. Because my dad is a photographer, so I just had access to it at a very young age. Um, and I haven't switched since. <laughs> I mean, I have uh, CSP. I just find that, like, with what I enjoy, I much prefer... Um, I much prefer Photoshop over CSP. It's just little quality of life things that I end up preferring. But I have them both. Called a professional artist a lot in school, but I'm just a, just an artist. Yeah. Well, it's whatever you want, you know? Professional artist just means that you do it as a job. Like, I'm a professional artist. Oh, sorry about phone buzzing. Want to go to school for photography and more, but never actually used Photoshop only once. Didn't like it. Photoshop is difficult. CSP, I'm already familiar with the program. If you are going to school for photography, unfortunately, you need Photoshop. If you're going for illustration, that's a different story. Because Photoshop is a photographer's program, not an illustrator's program. Um, yeah, it's industry standard for both, technically. But if you are going for photography, unfortunately, there is no better photo editing software than Photoshop. Like, it is it is the the strongest one out there. Or at least one of the strongest ones out there. It is, it is extremely difficult to find one that's better. Um, so, unfortunately, it's one of those things you gotta get used to. Um, Photoshop is... I think, like, going between CSP and Photoshop like, if you're, again, if you're really used to CSP defaults, like, Photoshop is pretty different. But in all honesty, like, going from Photoshop to CSP, it's not that difficult. If you can change it in CSP, you can change it in Photoshop. Um, because this is a couple of CSP defaults that I swapped out, um, when I got it. And it's, it's, they operate the same, I find, in, in a lot of cases. Obviously, there are some cases where they operate fairly different, but... You know, not the worst, I don't think. Media production, in fact, do lots of different things even filming. Yeah, for sure. But again, like media production. Then that means you're also probably gonna have to learn to use Premiere, and I'm sorry. <laughs> just like, just outright, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> if you don't like how Photoshop handles, you will despise how Premiere and After Effects handle. I think because they're they're worse. Like I, I. Photoshop is the only Adobe product, I think, that I can stand. And then everything else is like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> like, Illustrator is fine too, I guess. But even then, it's it's a little bit like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll deal with that. Let's work with it. Let's run it.
Premiere's better. Premiere sucks. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. I <laughs> I'm so like, I, after using, I've used various video editing softwares just to see like which ones work. I cannot stand Premiere. I, it's so like, after using Sony Vegas for a while and then also switching off and then like trying like media editors and then trying like stuff like that, I can't. I cannot stand Premiere. I am like, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, why is this so clunky? Why does this do this? Why does this do that? I'm like, I, I'm like, why doesn't it just do this? Why doesn't you, why can't you? I'm just like, oh man. That's a, that's a can of worms. I'm like, that's, I have very strong opinions about Premiere. I, <laughs> I cannot. Okay. So we're getting to the lining portion, which means that now I have to be very particular about how I work. Um, I'm turning up my smoothing. Lining on the inner portions of like the face um, is gonna be very, very delicate, but then I have to like bump out the silhouette a lot more. Dumbest thing is when some of the shortcuts between Adobe software aren't even the same. Real! Yes! 100%! It's like, it's like you sit there and you're like, why isn't this, like, move, like, on Photoshop? Or why isn't this, like, cut on, like, here? You know? It's just like, what's the- It's the same function. Why do you not have the same uh, shortcut? What's the point? What's the deal? You know? And I'm just like, I don't- I don't understand, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I literally only use Photoshop. I, I'm like, I can't stand any of the other Adobe products. I found a lot of people who were on Photoshop have started to switch to uh, DaVinci. DaVinci Resolve, I believe is what it's called. Because people are saying, like, oh, it's really, really good. I haven't given that one a try yet. The program I edit with, I wish it was easier, but I guess just practice. The PD production school we have to use in InDesign Illustrator. I hate it. I don't even use it. I'll use these, but I haven't failed anything with using it. LOL. Yeah, no, I, like, my school, or when, my, when I went to, um, college for, for game art, I was never, um, I, we, nobody was ever forced to work in a specific program. Uh, we were taught to work with Photoshop. Um, I mean, I, again, I used it my whole life. It's, I'm used to it. Um, But the, um, but they did like stress, like, hey, it's like, they probably won't let you use this when you're outside of school. <laughs> and a lot of the times they were right. Like my, my, some of my friends were like, I work in credit and they're like, sorry, I need somebody who's Photoshop, uh, Photoshop proficient and stuff like that. You'll see that at a lot of job listings. It's like... Proficiency in Adobe Suite is preferred. Starting using paper. Same. I I was a traditional artist until I was 13. <laughs> like, I, I, I've been doing digital for maybe like a decade now. But like, before then, it was like, I didn't even... I didn't... I was one of those losers who was like, Digital art's not real art. This is not, this is not real. It's on the computer. You know. Because I was dumb. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting into animation or graphic design as a career, but I'm not sure yet. Explore both. Animation takes a lot of time. Graphic design also takes a lot of time, but a different kind of a lot of time. So try out both. See what you prefer. Because animation is also one of those things that takes a lot of willpower. I'm like, I know, I, if you enjoy illustrating, 
but have never tried animating before, it is a super, super different process. I could never be an animator. It's it's not my thing. I, I don't have the patience. I don't have the time. You of all people, I was, I was, I was like 12. <laughs> oh good, and I'm jealous of Pierce's eyes too, SMH. Pierce is an elf, so he was designed to be very, very pretty. Like his, like, when I designed Pierce for my partner, I'll, I'll pull up the new one. Pierce is designed to be like a very pretty person. <laughs> Uh, where is this file? Oh no, it's in commissions, isn't it? Yes. Crow's folder, because I do so much work for him. Yeah. Pierce is, like, designed to be really, really pretty. It was like a, it was like a thing where, like, over time, it was just like, yeah, no, Pierce is, Pierce is a very handsome, very pretty man. Um, these are all the different. Oh, I guess I could have done Ruin, too, huh? Instead of just Winter. Oh, and then I could have drawn braids. But I guess this isn't- there's not a lot of braids in Mooka's work, so it makes more sense to do winter. What's the purple? This is Ruin. So Pierce's fifth form um, came out from him not wanting to feel anything. So it's like, by comparison to all the other seasons are linked to, like, emotions, this one is linked to, no, to like, a lack thereof. So, the Ruined Prince. It, we called it like a- or he, he refers to it as if it's like a place between seasons or a place between feeling. So it's like when- when a, uh, in campaign we compared it to a forest fire. Um, after the fire has settled and everything is just left and it's all burnt to the ground. That's- that's what we- that's what we compared it to. Story is this. This is our D&D &D campaign. It's our home game. He's not my character. He's my my partner's character. My character is a little dragonborn kid named Corn. <laughs> Want to make manga, but I can't draw backgrounds or anatomy bodies. It look different or wibbly, wobbly every time. I love comics. I draw comics all the time. Manga drawing a manga is very different from drawing a comic. I'm gonna stress that. Uh, being a mangaka is very different from. Um, being a comic artist because that that uh process is super different um but yeah a manga being a manga artist is <laughs> i don't think i can say that uh a manga artist is just it's it's a lot of work <laughs> is, is all it is it's a lot of work Love Pierce and Corn in this house. Yeah, my 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 faves. In the D&D campaign right now, playing as a paladin. She met someone who she didn't like. She punched him in the face. I'll have a plus four strength. Yo, plus four strength up top. <laughs> or no, what is mine? Mine is a plus six, isn't it? I have a thirty-three strength. Hang on, D&D. I'm a I'm a barbarian. Hang on, let's see. Corn, my dragonborn barbarian. We just leveled up. Yippee! Yeah, hundred forty-six hit points, twenty-three strength, nineteen con. Are my are my highest stats? Yeah, corn corn is strong. Corn is built built. <laughs> plus plus six strength, baby. Love drawing, making stories about why not. Yeah. How much HP? One hundred and forty six. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot for 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 the for a D and D character. Corn is our tank. My character is the tank of the party. So he he's the one who takes the most hits out of everybody. Level five, I took a feat instead of a stat increase. Uh did you play tough? did you take tough? That's the that's the HP one. I don't play D and D, is it fun? Yes! Yes! I love playing D D. <laughs> It's a role-playing game. You just get to play as your own characters. You just get to vibe and like you play with the other characters and you just get to make your OCs talk to each other and like fight critters and whatever. It is so fun to play as Corn. Like I get to do a voice for him and I get to I get to play as a little kid who doesn't really know that much and like <laughs> I get babied and it's great. <laughs> Last play played, I had 36 max. 
Ooh, 36 HP is very low. <laughs> Were you early campaign? Was it like a low level? Uh, Gunwinner's My Campaign is currently upset at our engineer because she treats robots like things to experiment on and play with. Two robots in the party. And TGW always improves, disapproves of it. That's real. I love D and D. I I've it's become my 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 forever obsession. I think I'm just I I love this game, dude. I like playing as funny little characters with my friends. <laughs> oh, first level. That makes sense. Yeah. No. If you're 36, first level. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you definitely didn't have enough time to get a good amount of HP. Short videos for How to Draw Anatomy? I'm pretty sure we've got a couple. Kevin, Joe, you got any locked and loaded? You own a cool set of dice for the game, do I? Hang on, I'm taking a picture. I don't want to turn on my camera because I look gross today. I'm, take, I'm taking a picture of my custom dice box and my custom dice for corn. <laughs> I'm not disclosing how much it cost. <laughs> I bought like a specific dice box for corn so it looks like a <laughs> so it looks like a book and then I bought uh I commissioned an artist to make a set of dice for for corn specifically. I love dice. I am super particular about dice, though. I am a I am a dice goblin with very high standards. <laughs> I'm like I love my sharp edge dice. I love like the handmade pour hand poured resin. You know. I am very very particular about my dice. Oh. Hang on. Okay, okay, okay. I just need to upload these <laughs> to Discord so I can just show you guys. Okay. Now you now you got me showing off my dice, man. I can't I can't deal with this. Okay, hang on. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got this. I got this. It's fine. I got this. Hang on. I got this. Oh my god, why are you not uploading? Oh, that's why. <laughs> okay, so these are the dice themselves. They're like a translucent gray and then have like little like gray smoke plumes going through them because Korn, like Corn's backstory was like, he has like a, he has a lot of memory issues. So it was like, I was like, it was like a foggy memory, you know, it's pretty funny. Um, and then the interior of my dice box, which is like, it, it has like a little rolling tray and then like it's made of like leather and then the exterior why is this rotated it's a book you see it sucks like the, the the picture sucks but like it's a book it's like a dice book hang on i'll put just put it into photoshop it's it it's, it's a book uh image image rotation made degrees kind of clockwise you see it's a book it's like a it's like a dice book and it opens up and then that's like the rolling tray and the dice thingy on the inside. It's so cool. It's so cool. I love this thing. <laughs> I love dice, dude. I love them. Oh, my, my my mouse is dying. Don't die, mouse. I'll plug you back in. I want to make merchandise one day, my own little business. What do you think people would want the most or have the most use for? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a product designer. Um, and it's it depends what kind of merch you're going for, I guess. Like if you're like, is it just for like merch for like you, or is it like fan content, or is it like like a, it really depends. Like I'm. 
Like, what people are looking for, that's not something I can answer right now because it'll be different in, like, a few months or years or whatever. Oh, mouse pad is awesome. Can't help but notice our pink demon Kirby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have a Kirby mouse pad. I have a Kirby on my microphone. I have a Kirby on my, my on my monitors and on my camera. Uh, I have a Kirby hanging from my phone. I have three Kirby figurines on my desk. I have a Kirby uh, game controller. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a Kirby mouse. I have like 20 Kirby plushies. Uh, my bowl that I keep my snacks in has a Kirby face on it. Um, <laughs> I, I live I live and breathe Kirby fans artists game fans anything it again it depends if you are making like what kind of games what games themselves are you doing like things for gamers specifically are you doing things for like gamers as a broad term or specific types of gamers like the a Splatoon player is gonna want something different than a Legend of Zelda player right God of War player is gonna want something different than like a Lethal Company player. Right? Someone playing The Sims isn't gonna want some the same thing as somebody who's played, like, Helldivers. Right? It's it's very, very, like, you gotta know the audience. You find your audience first, and then you do the pro- the- the products, you know? Like Kirby too. I live Kirby! How many Kirby games do you own? Most of them? Like, own or played? Because own is a good chunk. Played is even more. <laughs> because it's like, I I think I've played most, if not all, ever since Superstar Ultra came out back in like 2008. I think I skipped over Squeak Squad and the Rainbow Curse were two that I didn't play. Um, But I've played like all the others, if I remember correctly. Sims, I see you playing the other night, Jesse. Like, yeah, man. I I am not. Listen, I do not beat the uh, girl with really high powered PC just to play the Sims allegations. Okay, I am. That's. I don't beat the stereotype. I am her. <laughs> I've only played the one from Nintendo 1990. Wasn't even born that we still have the game. You gotta play the newer stuff, man. That's like, Kirby games only get better. And then you get the lore, and then you get to see Kirby, like, kill several gods. It's great. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> you gotta play the newer stuff, man. Like, Forgotten Lands, you get to see what Earth is like after humans destroy the environment and then are taken over by like aliens who are like well humans killed this place i might as well finish the job you know it's a great time kirby games are so good <laughs> kirby ribbed a hamster oh yeah that's um oh kirby's 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 dreamland 3 something like that kirby kirby 3 is that Pierce I see? You bet it is. Hi, Frey. How are you doing? I'm gonna have Pierce. Oh, I forgot his stick! I'll remember it when I draw the top of his head. Oh, the references. Kirby games. Very cool. Kirby games are just... are... are my everything. Kirby is... I have been a fan of Kirby since, like, 2009. And I've been, like, playing Kirby game. Like, it's my life vlog obsession. I have not stopped loving this character. I have three Kirbys hanging off of my bag. I have Kirby pins galore. My, my best friend tends to just continue to feed my Kirby love by giving me more Kirby merch. I... I'm just EB. I understand completely. This, have you played Squeaks? I forgot to see... Have you played Squeak Squad? That's the meme. Is That's one of the few I haven't played. I actually missed out on Squeak Squad. I played Mass Attack instead, which is like the, which is like the spinoff, <laughs> you know, which is like, I missed out on that one. So like, I want to, I want to, I'd still want to play it. Um, it's kind of like how I missed out on uh, Planet Robobot. Uh, so then I played it after the fact, I asked my brother for his copy and I played it uh, not too long ago, maybe like a year ago now. 
Um, and then I missed out on the Rainbow Curse, which is, like, that one, like, I know, like, I don't think I'll be able to play because that was the Wii U one. Um, and, like, that one, like, we gave our old Wii U to my cousins, so, like, I don't have it anymore. If they don't play it anymore, I might ask for it back so I can, like, play that game, but I don't know. They might still play it. Never forget that time you forgot Angel's Antler's Tail and Joker. Dude, I... Listen, I... I have no excuse. I... <laughs> I forget things all the time. <laughs> and a Wii U, yeah. Is that for the one for the DS? Uh, Robobot was for the 3DS, uh, along with Triple Deluxe. Um, and then... Um, Squeak Squad was for just the DS. Uh, Mass Attack was also on the DS along with uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra, which is the first Kirby game I ever played, and I was hooked. <laughs> What's a game with an art style you'd want to study? <sighs> what is a game with a style I'd want to study? What's a game that's visually stunning that I'd actually want to study? Because that, that's... That's so tough because I'm like so like I'm so particular about art styles and like the games that are visually stunning doesn't necessarily correlate with me wanting to study it I guess um a game that I studied the look of previously um was Rhyme. R-I-M-E, by the way. Really good game. Highly recommend it. You can finish it in like an hour. It's not that not that long. Um, but it was really, really good. Made me cry. Um, I really liked that one. Shoot, dude. It's hard. I don't, I don't actually know. <laughs> Persona. Pokemon is actually- Pokemon is interesting because that style is actually very easy to replicate, I think. Rain World's a good choice. Love to see more streams like this in the future. You're in luck! We have a few planned. I just don't know. I don't remember who the next artist is. <laughs> Let me check. So I know we, I know we planned these. Uh, da da da. This one's just playlist. Tube live. Let's see. Uh, the next one is in August, I believe, where I study um, uh, Hikari Shimoda. Great artist, by the way. Yeah. How do you make the hair flowy? Hair flows in a similar way to, to water. You know how to draw one, you draw the other. It's like you, you imagine it sort of falling around the different parts of the body. You imagine it sort of moving in that same way. You know? Oh, I'm definitely not finishing this by the end of the stream. <gasps> Are you kidding me? <laughs> man, oh man. I'll at least try to get Pierce himself done, but I don't know if I'll be able to do the background. Luckily, the line art's the hardest part, so like if I get the lines done, then the the coloring doesn't take that long.
you played Pokemon Quest? I have not. The pose is not posing. Come back to this drawing later tonight. Fair. indie games tend to have really epic styles to study it depends i find that like indie games like <sighs> i i like the style of indie games a lot um but again it depends on it depends on what game because i'm like i think indie game i think like i think like cult of the lamb i think uh oh gosh we call it um Oh, I don't know why I did that. That's, that's not. That's my style. That's not this one. Uh, why do I only think Cult of the Lamb? Um, <laughs> I know that there's more than that. Uh, Night in the Woods. Um, what remains of Edith Finch? Uh, Omori. Inscription. So on and so forth. Undertale. Um, which are like all really, really good, really visual stunning, but I'm like, I'm not really, I'm like, I don't think I'd study those, <laughs> you know? Winter or Ruin. It's winter. Here's my beloved Sam. <laughs> it's winter. Ruin would have, a uh, Ruin would have the, the braids. Love inscription. I've not played Wander Song, no. Stardew Valley, Coral Island, I think is indie. Yes, it is. Rain World, lots of games mentioned are indie. Yeah, of course. But again, like all the ones that I think I've mentioned that are indie are not ones that I'd study. Um, like Rain World is beautiful. Do not get me wrong. Rain World is gorgeous, but I'm not a pixel artist. So I'm like, I, I don't think I would want to study it. Like if, if anything, pixel, pixel art is like, is my Stockholm syndrome. I love pixel art, but I hate doing it. And it's like, I kind of forget that I hate doing it. And then I'm like, I'm gonna try it again. And then I do it and then I'm like, never mind. This sucks. <laughs> I do not have the patience. I do not have the the love of working with pixel pixel art to to want to do it religiously at any point. Pixel art's so fun, isn't? <laughs> pixel art is fun until it isn't. Hello, crow. There's Pierce's player. Point at him in chat. Scarecrow sketch. That's Pierce's player. <laughs> Point at him. <laughs> I want to do everything and anything. Real. The creature designs Subnautica, even though they're kind of basic. Are you kidding me? I Subnautica is what I use as like the like this is peak design. <laughs> Character in chat. No point. Hello, crow. Get pointed at. <laughs> yeah, we've got two of the two of the players in chat. We've got Frey Atrocity, uh, Frey who plays Atros um, in our campaign, our our lovely sorcerer warlock healer, who recently got his super powerful weapon, and then Pierce, who's our, our elegant elf ranger. Oh, uh, Atros is a tiefling. Um, and then Pierce is our love, lovely Eldrin Elf, Drake Warden Ranger. And then I play our, our tanky Barbarian. <laughs> Get pointed at it. <laughs> Summer is just fish with a big eye, visual hole in it, etc. Okay, but... The air, f the hole, the air fish with the hole in the center is so interesting. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> We all love Pierce in this house. So true. Pierce. Pierce supremacy. I think that's a bad thing. Yeah. No. There's no no problem with... You gotta have some basic designs if you're gonna have the intricate ones. And it's like... It, here's the interesting thing. For for those in chat right now... <laughs> you're tiefling, I think. Tief. Yeah, well, I mean, you do got teeth. Um... For, for those in chat who want to be character designers... Um, a design team will much rather prioritize you being able to just 
illustrate a really basic looking person by comparison to you being like being able to draw an elf right it's it's one of those things where they would much rather see you have the ability to draw an everyday joe by comparison to illustrating somebody really intricate and really interesting because more often than not you're going to be illustrating those really boring everyday people more frequently than say like a really high fantasy character right character design is not just hey i'm gonna make the main character of the story you're also gonna make the background characters you're gonna make the the, the shop keeps you're gonna make the you know you gotta make everybody as a character designer and if you don't have the ability to make somebody really basic then you don't really have the skill set yet to be a character designer fierce is fun and australian true <laughs> Pulled the stars out of the sky to save corn. Super true. Corn almost died last session. Yippee! Uh, to be fair, I think we all almost died. I think <laughs> that that combat was hard. <laughs> Video games capture the atmosphere so well. Yeah, man. This is winter. Yeah, it is winter, Pierce. So I can get his really long hair in here. I'm drawing. I've drawn three of Pierce's seasons today. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to make an everyday Joe look unique. Exactly. So it's it's very, very complicated, but it's a really good skill to have. <laughs> I was fine, I death warded. <laughs> Not all of us were death warded, Ray! <laughs> I almost got destroyed by a marble elephant, okay? It's much harder to design everyday characters compared to characters who have a very defined personality. Exactly, exactly. It's very, very complicated. So it's 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 important to have that skill too. Not you don't worry, yeah. A little juniper berries on his head. No, I forgot to draw the stick. I forgot it again. Oh my gosh. I was like, I was like, I'm going to draw it when I get to the top of the head. And then I didn't. LOL. It's okay. I'll draw it now. Don't mind me. Twin spell revive, so true. As a mage. Everyday robot. That might be harder too. Being able to to design like a society where you're just supposed to draw somebody who's like normal. It's tough. So sorry if you can hear the ambulance. <laughs> I don't know if that's picking up on my microphone. A stick. I did hear it a bit. Ah, uh, I apologize. Hopefully whoever's in trouble is okay. Or at least I hope they end up okay. <laughs> If they needed an ambulance, they're not okay. <laughs> it's safe to assume. Bill Jones late again. Let's see, that's all I want to find the name for. Oh! Like a poster? A poster style? You're uh you're gonna wanna look up um You're gonna wanna look up other artists like um Oh gosh, what's his name? It's it's the pop art movement. It's um it's not uh, before anybody says it, it's not um it's not and it's not Warhol. Um 
uh, Lichtenstein. Uh, you're gonna want to look up. Li uh, I forget his first name. Something Lichtenstein. Roy Lichtenstein. You're gonna want to look up Roy Lichtenstein. Try that one. But vintage. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Try 60s poster design. <laughs> Tears, man. Good Aussie dad. Good Aussie dad. Oh, the ambulance is my end. I hear fire, ambulance, please, everything. Oh my. the hair. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> it's a little bit funky, definitely less intricate than I'd want, but... Woo! I've been searching for so long. Easiest way to do that is to look up what year that was made. I'm like, I just so happen to know kind of general time periods, I think, but... Um, if you want that sort of, like, 60s, that sort of, like, I guess, vintage look to a poster, uh, you might also want to look up, um, oh, what's his name? Why am I so bad at remembering the names? Um, he was a really famous painter. He did a lot of really strong illustrative artwork. Um... He was a hyper realist. Um, he did that one painting that was really, really controversial at the time, um, where it was a little, it was a little girl, a little black girl going to school, um, being guarded by two other guys. I think it's called the. It was called the way things are. I can't remember what the name of the artist is. No, not Chris Pratt, babe. <laughs> um. I did a video on him, and I know I did. Norman Rockwell, thank you! Yes, Norman Rockwell. That's an artist I'd like to study. Bring another guy. It's Norman Rockwell. It's Norman Rockwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm bad at remembering names. <laughs> I'll never forget a face, though. Thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, how do you like the lines on the top of the head look good? Like where the hair sprouts from the head? You just gotta figure out where your hairline is. So in this case, Pierre specifically, I draw him with a middle part, a split. So it's like you kind of just have the hair sprouting from that split. Um, but some people have a crown. Some people have a, like, more than one split in the hair. Some people have a side part. You know, stuff like that. So you just got to figure out what sort of, like, what the hair type of the individual is. Took Cubone to the park, recorded and edited a bunch. My grandpa invited me to a winery to watch him play music. <gasps> That's fun! Are you gonna go? Gotta dip now, I'll see you in curl later, probably. Okay, bye! Have a good one! I might play Sims later. <laughs> yeah! When is, he, when is it happening?
I don't have cow licks, never will do what they want ever. My life. My brother used to get really bad cow licks. Uh, now my brother uh, is very, very conscious about fashion. So he's very particular about his hair. His hair and his the way he looks. Watch Dragon Movie later and get back. I'll be able to stream when it's 6.30. Yeah, yeah. We can watch Dragon Movie later. Yeah, I'm doing style study. <laughs> Which I will 100% not be able to finish by the end of this stream, but that's okay. I will do as much as I can. Because like, yes, I have finished these lines specifically. Um, but technically I haven't finished my lines yet because I still also need to do the super, super thick outline because that's another thing that makes Art Nouveau really special is the super, super thick immediate, uh, silhouette outline. want to try this if I have time. Do it, dude. It's fun. It's not the first time I've done Art Nouveau. Like, the the Zelda and the thumbnail, she's a- I did that one a long time ago. I wasn't able to get the background as, like, intricate as I wanted, but, like, it wasn't bad. I tend to only do MUCA studies for Wing Canvas. Like all of my all of my Art Nouveau studies are Alphonse MUCA. <laughs> Thank you for the ten dollar dono, Joe. Appreciate it. Appreciate it lots. I want to try style study, but I figure I have a lot of fundamentals to figure out first. I don't think it's ever too early for a style study, because then you can understand their fundamentals too. At the end of the day, an art style is just a set of rules. Like, that's it. So. It's like whatever you feel, whatever you feel works, you know? <laughs> Autodesk, I think, is. I, like, Autodesk I only use as, like, a digital sketchbook. Like, I don't ever use Autodesk for finished pieces because Autodesk, again, it's called Autodesk Sketchbook, right? It's not the most powerful tool in the world. It's not bad, but it's, like, it's lacking a lot of functions. It's like, for me, it is just okay.
can learn how an artist colors as their values. Maybe they have a way of doing portraits you really like. It's all about learning from people you want to use in your own art. Exactly. Exactly. I don't think last time I did a style study for myself was like last year. Um during like the the digital illustration camp. Um, which will be taught by Josh this year, by the way. Um and it was like what do you call it? Um I I studied like an artist online um who I really enjoyed the work of and I was like, okay, I really wanna like see how this person works. And it was like I looked at like their line work and I looked at the colors they used and like it's it's observation. It's all observation. Do not underestimate the power of observation because it is one of those things that like once you're able to just observe everything it is art it becomes 20 times easier i have a lesson that i like to teach um if i don't have any other lesson planned and it's the art of drawing everything or like how to draw everything and it's literally just it just teaches you how to observe like it's like look at something all right and break it down into something really simple Right, you're gonna take a cup for me. If you've got a cup, I'm just gonna do this really, really quickly. If you've got a cup, right, you got a cup or you got a, a, a water bottle or something, something cylindrical, right? If you got a, that, something around you, right? Take a look at it. What do you notice about this cup? How many cylinders is it made up of? How short is it? How tall is it? How thin? How thick? What's the material made of? Is there a handle on it? Right? And you're going to visualize that. You're going to think about that. And now that you understand the thickness and tallness and shortness of this cup, you understand if it has a handle or not, you sort of understand the simpler 3D forms that the thing is made of, you now have the ability to draw it in any angle you want. Right? Art is just observation. It is just looking at something, understanding how it goes, and going, okay... If I know that this is supposed to look like this, then from this angle it must look like this, or from this side it must look like this, right? Of course there's like, you know, physical skill that you gotta build up as well, right? Certain hand movements that you get better at, certain, like, techniques that you grow accustomed to as you illustrate more, right? That kind of thing. But the theory is there. And once the theory is there, then the technical aspect of the way that your body actually moves gets a lot easier. Probably need to work on my observations drawing. I feel like I have a hard time accurately capturing references. Yeah. Even even looking at references takes practice, right? Obs even observation takes practice. why it's a lesson it's not a tip it's not something that you can start doing and immediately you understand everything finish watching your video monster making how do you get past the creative block you stop drawing Literally not a joke. If you find that you have creative blog, if you have art blog, anything like that, means you're overworked, probably. Or you're burnt out or something. Just stop for a bit. There's no shame in it. It's one of those things where, like, you gotta understand your limit. And if your limit so happens to be, hey, I can't come up with anything anymore, stop. Go take a break. <laughs> Go watch something fun. Go do something fun. It's, it's... It's your body telling you, hey, I'm out of energy. I'm out of ideas. Can we do something different? Listen to it. Oh, yeah. Iggy made a video, too. Yeah. Go watch Iggy's video. He worked very hard. Out of brain juice. Yeah. Sometimes you're just out of brain juice. I get it.
Again, apologies if I'm not chatting much. I'm trying to, like, <laughs> speed through this a little bit. I don't really do line art this clean anymore. Even this isn't that clean. This is, like, kind of messy in some areas. I thought the answer was coffee in a quiet area. I mean, you could, but I'm like, if you want to force yourself to work, then you can, but like, sometimes you just gotta stop. <laughs> Taking breaks and playing with art, trying new mediums, trying new subjects, etc. can help. I think a lot of people that get burnt out at high expectation, they get burnt out, set high expectations, that sucks the fun out of creating. Exactly. It's like, I, I used to draw every single day and it killed me. So, on um, Sundays, I just, I don't draw. I'm like, I tell myself, I'm like, this is, this is the day that I don't draw. I do anything but draw today. Permanent status ailment of any time I have to figure out folds. Brain juice, negative 50. Folds are, folds are like, follow the movement of the body. And then folds get a lot easier. Folds are just a lot of triangles. Tringles. <laughs> Again, it's a thing that you get used to. It's not an immediate, like, oh, I know this now. It's it's a thing that you, you slowly get an eye for, I think. How did you guys start doing commissions as beginner artists? Uh, I wasn't a beginner artist uh, when I started doing commissions. Um, I started doing commissions when I was long in the game. <laughs> I've been doing it for a very, very long time. Um, I have a video series on commissions. <laughs> that's uh, that's 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 somewhere on the channel. You can you can go take a look at that if you want. low grade fever oof all right go take go get some rest joe get some rest Bless me. God. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, Vin. Welcome in. Okay. I think that's the lines on this one. <laughs> Oops. That's the lines on Pierce specifically anyway. I don't I'm probably I'm not gonna be able to color this. I <laughs> or I'm not gonna be able to line the rest. I know that for sure. I might finish this off stream. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens, I suppose. Oh, nope, that's the wrong color. This is the right color. 
That's the wrong pierce. I make that green. Nice. That's the nice thing about this being one big shape. Is it's, it's really easy to fill in. <laughs> Are comic books good styles? To, good to study styles from? Of course. You can study any sort of style you want. It's just what you want. Like it is, a style is like, it's a set of rules for art, and it's like, those are rules that you set yourself. No two styles are the same, and it's because it's something that you create, right? If you like comic book styles, then maybe you want to study from comic artists. And the interesting thing with Muka is that even though his like he has a really heavy line work style the insides are actually painted they're a little bit more painted so that's what we're gonna do oh i forgot I'll do it. I'm doing alright. Love it so far. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, styles vary greatly between comic artists as well, yeah. Depends on what kind of comic you're looking for. Our styles can't be copyrighted, but if you're doing a study and copying an exact piece, credit is very important. True. Yes. Some artists also do not allow studies of their work, so you gotta make sure, like, that person is okay with it. But if the person has been dead for hundreds of years, like, this guy, <laughs> it's alright. I cannot stress this enough, by the way, the way that I'm working to shade right now, I do not recommend doing this ever. <laughs> the way that I am rendering this out right now, I do not recommend it. It's like, if you are more of a beginner and you're watching me render out the face like this, don't do this. This is one of those things where like really heavy control of the brush is necessary and it's like, a soft brush is harder to wrangle than you might think. So it's like, I don't think I'm doing this super great. I'm just trying to get this done fast. So like, I, again, I cannot stress this enough. This enough don't do this. <laughs> this should not be your first way of rendering with a soft brush. No airbrushing. I'm doing what I think is fastest right now. <laughs> 
Because you actually can get sharp edges with an airbrush. Just not easily. By brushing this out as well, I realized a mistake. recommend instead of that for the face uh, I would recommend a better beginner's way of working is starting with a hard brush and softening it out afterwards like this is definitely for more advanced people that original way I was working so like if you want to work in a way that is a little bit less advanced again start with a, with a harder brush and work softer like the way I'm kind of doing it now Okay. I will definitely finish shading this off camera, but I don't know about the rest of the piece. But thank you all so much for joining me today. It's five o'clock again. One more time before we head out. I'd like to thank the sponsor for this stream XP pen, uh, who have awesome selection, who have an awesome selection of digital, digital art tablets for both beginner and advanced artists. So if you're looking for an affordable and reliable digital art tablet, go browse their store. You'll find the link in the description of this video. All right, thank you all so much for joining today as well. Um, don't know too much about us, don't know much. Don't know too much about the studio. Hey, hi, we're Wayne Canvas. WayneCanvas.com, check out the classes that we offer. So much more classes, you can check those out. Summer camps are also coming up. I'll have an asynchronous course of asynchronous course of comics and manga which you'll be able to join and you know check out the recordings of instead of popping into the live class um this piece that you see me working on the jpeg will be available on the discord you'll be able to chat with other art nerds other people on there um you know, check that that side of the discord out and other than that though if you want working files, if you want critique sessions, access to secret little places in the Discord, uh, join the Patreon, become a YouTube member. You'll be able to get access to stuff like that, get access to our office hours, chat with us in Discord calls, so on and so forth. But all right, tomorrow, tomorrow's stream, who do you have? Is it Josh? Is it Iggy? It's Iggy, you guys. Tomorrow we'll be having Iggy drawing a rainy background. Um, and then next week, Saturday, Saturday, you'll be learning how to paint water traditionally uh, with Faye. Um, that's fun, but all right. Thank you all so, so much for joining with me today. And I'll see y'all in a couple weeks. Au revoir. Bye-bye.